What is good? We're back for an FF Dynasty quad pod. Boom, and a fresh crack to get get us rolling. The gang's all at a fun one today. Some Dynasty rankings, top 12-ish receivers. Gonna tear them up, rank them up, all for your pleasure. We got our guy, Matt, over there. How you doing, Matt? Well, and yourself? Doing very well. No one very, cares very how well. Casey's doing. Don't ask him how he's doing. <laughs> Nobody he's asked me for years when I did this. All the time. <laughs> he likes that. He's from the North. Yeah. I'm from the North as well. So you like to be treated <laughs> poorly as well. No, I would like to be treated how I want to be treated, which is well. <laughs> well, he did they go? immediately ask how middle? Casey was doing. I respect that. Yeah, which never happened. I was born happens. in the North. My soul was born in the South. All right. All right. Bless you. <laughs> Bless your heart. Because not going to tell me what's up. Jay Wayne, how you doing, buddy? Oh, uh, you know, just just slipped into the seventh circle of hell. <laughs> it's hot in South Carolina right now. Was, today might have been the worst day uh, yet. It was just humid. It was very aggressive out there. It just had to rain. It just started raining. It was just like, I can't, I can't do anything else. It's got to rain. <laughs> So, uh, had yeah, it was so refrigerator hot delivery guy here today. Them boys hightailed it out when the rain started. I was like, Jesus Christ, I'm so close. <laughs> Still ain't got a fridge. Damn. Ah, what? All right. The amble's been taking too long and you guys are annoying. So let's yep. get to the show. He, um, for those of you who may think the preamble is annoying, you can fast forward. You can go to the timestamps and you these nice timestamps that Jason kindly lays out for you ever every week or you can kgfy and go listen to something else <laughs> see ya <laughs> gfky <laughs> yeah. yeah kindly put the kindly in there because we've been in the south for a while mm, all right boys correct. you guys ready correct. to get into it let's do it wide receiver rankings all right we're gonna uh we're gonna jump right in here i am obviously not there right now little little illness didn't want to get the boys down um but I would say probably consensus, Justin Jefferson and Chase in a tier of their own here. Can we go around the room? Everybody's good with that? Yeah. Yeah, Chase over Jefferson, but whatever. Yeah. Big Co? Yeah, I don't think you're going to get any argument pretty much out of anybody that uh, Jefferson and Chase are separated themselves. Uh, obviously interesting. They were college prospects. Um, I mean, college Together. teammates. College teammates. Uh, pretty, pretty awesome. Uh, for me, I'll take I'll take Jefferson first because Agreed. we've we we got the consistency there. Um, I understand, and we've seen that the ceiling is there for Chase is the big play guy. Interesting enough that the college team thought the same thing. They had Jefferson crush, brought him in the slot when Chase showed up. So they obviously the you know LSU thought Chase had a little bit more big play splash, but. Basically, you plug in just Justin Jefferson in your lineup. You got 18 points. Fix it and forget it. Put him in there. Last year you got 19 points. Right. So. That's what I'm, you know. So you put in Jefferson, 18, 20 points a game. It's a done deal. Nobody can cover the guy. Um, hands like glue. Love it. Um, Jamar Chase. Absolutely. Nobody's hit the scene like Jamar Chase since Odell Beckham. Right. Well, Absolutely. Since Justin Jefferson. Uh, you know, absolute superstar. Well, Justin Jefferson, silky smooth. He just doesn't pop off the television. Like you can't, if you're going against him in a fantasy matchup and it's like fourth quarter and you're like, I'm winning by five points. And then Jefferson catches another ball and he, Jefferson catches another ball. Jefferson, he, you can't, you're like, you're just screaming for the defense to defend him. Like stick Justin Jefferson. They can't do it. Can't do it. Justin Jefferson, absolute monster. Jamar Chase. You're down by 15 points the, in the fourth quarter, and he hits a big one sure. long play. Yeah. And Jamar Chase, yeah. the second coming of Odell, as far as like star powers, you know, just immediately jumps to the top of the page for value. As um, soon as he plays a couple games, pretty awesome that they were teammates. And here we are, top two. Yeah, shout out to the beat writers last year. He said he couldn't catch. So yeah. love it. Love yeah. It. Yeah. yeah, that was fantastic. He slipped to 1 5 in some rookie drafts if he did them late, which was awesome we got them uh, right and i wrote one real quick note on the two of them so we've been doing mocks all off season long over on patreon.com slash eff dynasty and i took the the uh onus upon myself to put a little adp together of those of our last five mocks uh jefferson and chase went one or two in each and all five of them so they're right there take your take your favorite one and be happy about it 
I gave you a virtual pat on the back for that one. Um, Thanks. Yeah, it's appreciate not you. No, yeah, I did, but, it, but I did it for did your it. Comment pleasure. Below all yeah. those things. If you're listening on the podcast, five stars. If you're listening on the YouTube, comment below. Like, dislike, haters, lovers, whatever you got. Keep them coming. Haters, lovers. Let's hey, keep it going. Did you know the negative comments help the algorithm? You mm, son of a bitch. So appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> How could you have this guy over this guy? Uh, the only reason I'm doing this just for the, the negativity. Yeah. All right. So next for me would in starting the next tier for me would blam is, ev is everybody anybody vehemently against cd being in the next tier no i don't think anybody should be uh, uh, upset about that um i'm you know you guys all have cd in your next tier i have uh, a little bit of a a slight adjustment to my tier breakdown here, but I, I don't think anybody's going to be, you can't be upset with CD Lamb. He's about to come into his third year. He's about to blow up. No Amari Cooper. Dax had a, a fresh off season where he's not worried about his foot. Um, right, he's CD healthy. Lamb and, 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 and Michael Gallup's not completely healthy. CD Lamb's about to absolutely blow up. Yeah. I mean, you got, you got a guy in CD who, you know, we, we haven't even seen quite the best of, I, I think yet. Um, so, you know, you could say, why is he up there? It's like because because when you put the, when you put it on, he's good at football. He's been 22 and 15, respectively, uh, through the wide receivers and in, in, uh, overall scoring. Um, and that kind of take a little bit of a step back last last year. The offense kind of took a little bit of a step back in, in general. Um, but I think CD's primed and ready to roll um, for a nice breakout here. Young um, just and the talent is, is outstanding. So I'm fine with CD still, you know, being kind of up here. Um, is, is there is there a tier break for anybody here or is there a bigger tier for anybody? What, what are we thinking? Yeah, I have CD in a tier by himself here. I think that I think that he has the chance to join the top tier, okay. possibly with a big season this year. But for I sure. think he's kind of a, he's kind of by himself right now because the guys right below him have already proven it to a certain extent. But they're also a little older as well, too. So I kind of put CD by himself because I feel like he's kind of in between. He's he's. He has the possibility where he could be in the he could be in the first tier come this season, or he could be in the third tier come next season. So I think he's kind of in between there. So I wanted to really kind of have him there by himself. I like it. I like that. I like Matt. the logic there. Um, for me personally, I'm putting Jalen Waddle in this tier. I know some people are going to say, "Hold the phone, you're an idiot. How could you do that?" Um, I'm putting this guy in there because he just broke the rookie receiving record. This back, obviously, Tyree Kill comes in, and that's probably going to, you know hurt him a little bit but there for for all the hurt you're getting silly a little bit of help and you can argue whether or not another great stud being there is is great uh for another guy but i think um you know waddle already having the rapport with tua is is something that that we can't sleep on and like i said yeah they had an extra game this year but uh he missed it due to covid so it's not like he broke the record because played the extra game um so you know broke anquan bolden's record continuity with with the with the quarterback to him making a step forward and i have a lot of confidence in the 49ers uh mike mcdaniel's coming over and the system that he's going to run i think is tailor-made for both of their receivers really but and then you know waddles you know a whole bunch of years younger than tyree kill um so you know i saw from waddle i like the prospect i like I like that Tua can get it done, I think. Um, and I like this system that's about to be there. Uh, McDaniel's been with Shanahan since 2008, followed him everywhere. He's the most trusted guy in that building. Huge blow for the Niners to lose. Um, but he's, he's going to go down there and do his damn thing and, and, and take that offense to a whole nother level. And, and, you know, I think if you, you know, Jimmy, uh, I think Tua is, is for sure a better version of Jimmy seen the best Tua yet either. Uh, Cause I think there was some friction between him and Flores. Uh, so I think, uh, we're going to see it to a uh, uh, poor man's maybe Drew Bree and a deal here with with what two is about to lay down. So I'm putting Waddle up in that tier for me. Well, that last little bit might have been a little laggy. We reset uh, trying to get this thing back on track. This is why we like to be in person and live. The vibe's different and there's no lag. So um, just to finish up on the Waddle thing, um, you know, I know a lot of people won't have him here, and this is the problem with rankings and tiers and stuff like that. If you don't have context applied to it, I'm not saying you have to take him above these guys. We've done a lot of mocks. I've been in a lot of mocks. I look at a lot of ADP, and a bunch of the guys that we're about to talk about, four or five of them, pretty much always consistently go over Waddle. So if you're in my camp and you like him, and this is a real draft and you can trade back, then you can feel comfortable moving probably damn near a half round back 
or almost even a full round, round back in a lot of cases where I'm saying that I would be comfortable taking him um, and, and still get him. Um, I just really like uh, Waddle and, and what's about to, I think, take place. Um, and I, like I said, I got a lot of confidence in everything that's kind of going on over there. And, and he's super young, like Tyreek's, you know, going to be there and, and, and probably be pretty good. Probably, you know, keep him from being the elite of the elite, but he's going to, I think he's still going to be damn good and, you know, still only 23 years old and we just came into the league and slayed it so yeah 23 years old that's that's a big point to hit there and 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 like you said you don't have to take Jalen Waddle necessarily as the fourth wide receiver off the board out of all five mocks that I charted uh he, he's the overall ADP sixth wide receiver um and that's only because you and I have been taking him a lot in these in these mocks ninth uh, wide receiver all overall sixth ninth sixth seventh so never once has he cracked the top five in any of those mocks so you don't necessarily have to take him there but I, I'm with you I got him in this in this tier as well behind CD Lamb um I could on a day I'm feeling frisky I could throw him up above there but I get it I get the reservation with with Tyreek even though he's 28 still being there um but hopefully Tua can take that big step forward but he you you mentioned it. I want to harp on it again. He just fits so well with what McDaniel wants to do in that scheme. Last year, it felt like he never even really got that loose. He was still eighth in yak with 455 yards, uh, and then he goes up and gets the ball. Like he was tied for second in contested catch percentage, was 70.6 percent. He caught 12 out of 17 contested targets that were thrown to him, which is pretty pretty damn strong so he's a dog when the ball's in the air he's got elite athleticism he was still getting over an ankle injury from college and he and he, like you said broke the rookie record for catches in 16 games last year so I, i'm gonna bet on the talent and not necessarily the situation where he's got another elite guy with him so i'm gonna throw some cold water on here i have yeah. him two tiers behind both of you guys yeah and mine is just because of everything you just said i'm concerned about to his maturation process um, again, with with Casey said about McDaniel's, I'm a little bit worried about McDaniel's. I don't know how much. What's the passing volume going to look like when McDaniel's McDaniel's is fully in charge? I mean, they've got literally a stable of running backs there. But no one like elite, you know. No, but I'm not. But but that, but that's been the San Francisco way for years. They've ne- they haven't had an elite guy since Frank Gore left. So how much are they going to? What's the passing volume going to look like? Hills there as well too. Um, they have Gasicki there as well. Um, I, I, I think I think that Waddle's probably going to make that jump, and I will adjust then. And I'm going to be too late on him. I think in some of these some of these drafts, I might reach on him with my own rankings, just so I can grab a share or two in a startup. But in the in the the leagues I already have Waddle, I was probably drafting him with a top five rookie pick last year, which I was mu- which I'm much happier doing, taking that stab on a rookie pick rather than drafting him in the third round in a in a startup. Yeah, and that's pretty high for taking him top five in a rookie draft last year. So kudos for doing that. But probably he's probably the five. He's probably in the, the probably in the four five the five six area. He's probably right at the right at the back end of that top five. But he was still there. I just I want to see it in the new offense. And again, I'm concerned with, with with Tua taking the next step. If Tua can't take that next step, obviously yeah. we saw Waddle have a good season last year. But is that is that worth taking him? What is is that worth taking him at the beginning of the third round? I'd say no. I would say yeah, yes. I guess, I guess I'm yeah. I'm certainly down with that. I guess what my take would just be like I think, you know, just just because first of all, Debo and Ayuk have been on the field and Kittle have been on the field at the same time and been able to produce fantasy numbers. Uh, sure. In this system, uh, but. Furthermore, like it, it, this hasn't always just been I think it's to Garoppolo's limitations and what they're comfortable with Garoppolo doing. I think this could be a whole lot more opened up and, and be still have the same run game concepts and maybe lean on the run a little bit more than some teams. But then that just, you know, decimates you with Hill and and um, Waddle's ability to open things up. So. You know, yeah, I, I think most people are probably in your camp, Matt. Um, so, I you think, know, I don't, not, not too much. Yeah, I think most people there, are probably going to be in, in between the two of us. Yeah. I think somewhere I probably have I probably have been even a lower than I might want to take him. But at the same time, I, I can't pull that trigger as early as you guys are going to take him, yeah. especially in the same tier as a guy, as someone like CD. Yeah. 
So for me, the next guy that is kind of, I don't know what to do with and is kind of floating in this tier and we'll address it as we go on is, is AJ Brown. I want him to be up here. I want him to be in this tier. I think at, at his peak, at his top tieredness, he's, he's up right in here and could even be in with those other guys. I am a little bit worried about the Eagles slightly. Um, and obviously the health of AJ Brown, the, the, the talent and, and the human is outstanding. Um, but I, I don't, I'm, I'm having a hard time placing, uh, AJ Brown. So does anybody have any other people in this tier, uh, any thoughts with AJ Brown and where he might be, you know, the, you guys take it away with any of that. Well, I'll jump in here. You know, Matt's got the tier by himself at CD Lamb. Jay Wayne adds Waddle. Casey, you got A.J. Brown jumping in there. I um, kind of don't know. It's a question mark next to A.J. Brown. All right, fair enough. Um, just from I'll throw in my quick two cents on Waddle. I like to, to bring up and escalate Matt's ranking of Waddle just a little bit. You know, you just saw Tua and Waddle – make basically magic at a very low a dot so even if Tua doesn't necessarily take another progression you know if he doesn't go where he might go right where you know if he doesn't become what casey said just a minute ago about poor man's drew Brees, if he doesn't make poor man's drew he, he's basically a poor man's drew Brees right now but like if he oh, really, the accuracy if he if he jumps up to another step and he's like oh that's it's deep I, ball you know, accuracy yeah then it's top notch great for Jalen waddle but if he doesn't i just like i mean it's in ppr format like you just he's pretty much still a lock for 90 catches you know so like and then with his jack with his ability to be explosive and the inability of the defense to key in on him with Tyreek Hill on the field as long as he stays healthy and then a, a well thought out programmed running game that's going to scheme it's it's going to be interesting I feel like the the value and the asset and the equity in Jalen Waddle is safe you definitely don't have to take him as high as Jay Wayne and Casey are telling you to that that, that they feel comfortable putting his value you don't have to you don't have to draft him there, right? But because he and, and just in, you know, of course every draft's different. But a DLF ADP never went higher than eighteen or nineteen. Whereas if you, you know, a CD Lamb could go eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve in a lot of drafts. You're talking about that somebody that these guys are all put these these two guys are putting in the same tier. I have those two guys in the same tier. If you have a guy, if you're an existing this, if this is like dynasty rankings value versus and it, if you start up and you got all the options in the world so you can in your mind you can move around i can take i can draft this guy here i can trade back up i can get two of these wide receivers i can do this i can do that if it's an existing league you good luck trying to get Jalen waddle off the team that he's on right yeah. Yeah. good good luck trying to to you know trade for that guy uh you know as far as aj brown goes like i think AJ Brown's an absolute stud, like he's most trade people. For horrible, he, though. He's trade for horrible. He had his he had his injury situations. He had his, he's got his potentially rickety knees, but now he goes and he jumps in with a uh, the Eagles team with a quarterback who we probably don't think can support passing volume wise. I, th- I mean, the Eagles are going to win games. Mm-hmm. I like the direction they're headed in. I love the AJ Brown get for the Eagles. I think it is, you know, I think it's a great get for the quarterback. I just think between him and Goddard and, uh, you know, Devonta, Devonta Smith and this yep. and that, I just don't see week to week that consistent ceiling. The ceiling is always going to be yep. there with AJ Brown. Cause he's just that catch us catch a slant ticket the house monster Mm -hmm. the defenders bounce off of him but for me like i like cooper cup and Devontae adams up here too Mm -hmm. if i'm starting if i'm as i I made the point a while back about cooper cup being like the antonio brown of this quote unquote this like generation right this you know because dynasty we're in a whole new generation of when antonio brown doing what he was doing that was five years ago that's a whole different generation from you know we've we've most of these guys don't even are, are, are brand new. Yeah. Right. So Cooper Cup is this, you know, right now is potentially the, the Antonio Brown of the of the draft now at a 28 year old, 29 year old guy that could be going for a couple couple years here and score you 28 points a game. Devontae Adams goes over with his boy Carr. Same thing. So, like, I have complete confidence in drafting those guys up here to help me win championships. You know, that's. Uh, not CD Lamb's probably going to help you win a championship too. 
I just talked about that earlier about how, you know, Amari being gone, Dak being comfortable. He's already said he's had a much more fun, you know, off season because he didn't have to talk, concentrate on one foot. You know, it's diff- I think that ceiling for all these guys are there. Cup and Devontae Adams ceiling is a little bit higher than all these guys. Short term points per game, week to week, mm-hmm. help me win. I love those guys up here too. It just CeeDee Lamb, Jalen Waddle, safe, safe assets. Cooper Cup, Devontae Adams, not as the, the you know, obviously they're going to depreciate, but in the next two to three years, they're going to help you win championships in a, in a slightly more aggressive manner than the Lambs and Waddles, I feel. Yeah, so you're so putting, I like, I like you're putting Cup and Adams guys. in tier two? I like those guys up here, yes. Okay, and Jason, what's your tier two look like? I know you said CD and Waddle, is that it? Yeah, that, that, I, got, I got a break there, I feel like, uh, you know, I get I get the Cooper Cup argument because I think we all all three of us remaining have Cooper Cup at the start of the next tier. For some reason, I don't feel as good about Devonta Adams leaving Aaron Rodgers. Although you know it's a great second place for him to go. You should. Uh, yeah. I mean, I just don't know that he's going to see that target volume, and and he, he just he's not going to. It's just not going to be the the ceiling that you've seen his whole career. I don't think. I mean. It's been so good, and he's 29 years old as well. I just feel like I got to take, I got to take some youth. I think is pretty no, I, much the main reason why I've bumped Devontae down. But I agreed. don't feel that way with Cooper because, because the situation isn't changing at all. And and yeah, they brought in a Rob. But even if you dock, even if you give us a, a 25 percent regression in Cooper Cup's production next year, he still got he's still as good as Devontae Adams was with Aaron Rodgers pet last year. So. That's why I'm feel good about Cup. I think I'll take the youth with Waddle and Lamb, but Cup could be there right next to him. Devontae, I've got him bumped down a little bit. Well, I, I have my like this. Th- th- they're basically two tiers in the same tier for me because it's basically for me it's mindset, right? You got the Cooper Cup, Devontae Adams. You got the complete like, hey, let me grab these guys. We know for sure in three years they're not going to be worth this, but for the next two or three years they could be absolute monsters yeah. and then you got the cd lamb Jalen waddle like their next two or three years they're not going to be they're going to in three years they're going to be cooper cup's age not even for for waddle not even right and cd is yeah. about to have his third year breakout you know so like it's at, at to a me, 23 year old dude exactly so to me it's mindset obviously you don't dra- you don't have to draft Devonte adams over these cats it's mm-hmm. just for me that's where i put them on the pedestal of helping me win my championships that's where I'm, uh, they're up here for me in that value, but you don't have to pay for them. Yeah. I think also with Cup and Adams, they don't play that game like a lot of these guys do. Is a lot of their game is built on route running, and they're just they're just overall fo- exactly their football intelligence. They're super Adam's smart. IQ is off the charts. Yeah, footwork, route running. These guys are going to age a little more gracefully than a Tyreek Hill does because they're not just speed merchants. They're, I mean, and Tyreek puts his body on the line the way he plays. Play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And 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 Adams and obviously Cup do as well too because they're playing in the slot and what, and you feel better about those two off the field than you do Tyreek yeah well, so. yeah uh, just 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 a little bit yeah yeah all right so all right. going into tier three here Big Co you kind of have skirted those Cup and Adams up going into tier three here um, I got I'm gonna go Cup Adams. Um, and I feel like if you're going to put those guys up there, you got to put Diggs up there. I mean, it's, I the, it's, it's just the same, it. it's the same it. damn thing. It's yep. the same it. thing. He's exactly. been that's, up, that's at the, up in the top five, seven wide receivers. He's locked into Josh Allen. He's their number one. He's a year younger than those guys. Yep. Um, I got to have I got to have Diggs in there uh, with those guys. And, and to your point of, of mindset. Um, cup, you usually don't get afforded the uh, luxury of being able to decide because you have two players on your team already, but sometimes, like, you can still get Devontae Adams in the third round sometimes, a lot of the times. And, For and sure. You can then decide of, hey, I got the, – whether it's super flex or not, you know, maybe I got a – one quarterback and a and a super young uh running back or something like Brees Hall and maybe then you don't draft Devontae Adams but maybe you got uh maybe you got Herbert and Stafford and now you're like well fuck it let me get let me get Devontae Adams as my third pick because I'm I feel fucking fantastic about those two quarterbacks and I'm ready to go like right. let's go I and like now that. my mindset for the draft changes slightly the only um, thing about the digs I know you want to jump in just to, uh, let me talk yeah. damn it the only thing about the digs is <laughs> Diggs just doesn't feel like he's as, he's as, as 
likely for the two and three touchdown games as we've seen out of Adams and Cup. And uh, can, just a year removed away from that, though, you know, but not he was not, like wide receiver two in twenty. Well, because he called one hundred and thirty five balls, but you know, like I just feel why like, isn't he going to do that again though? Well, he, well, he can, but he was like wide receiver seven last year. Tw- ten. No, no, no. Let's see. Where's Diggs at? He was wide receiver seven. Well, that's but all right. So, but and he Cup, was ninth overall in points per game. Yeah, but the dip. What was the dip? Obviously, Cup just set records. But well, like sure. even even being a wide receiver eight, seven, eight, nine, like the difference that next level is almost like that top end. Run. Cup Cup was giving you Todd Gurley numbers last year. Mm-hmm. You know, pre peak Todd Gurley numbers. Not my knee stop working. Todd Gurley numbers. I mean, yeah, I'm with I, you. I don't have Diggs in this class. I think Diggs will be really good. I don't have him in this particular tier, but still a really great player. And, and I get oh, the argument. Not, I mean, yeah. he could go back to being the second. He could catch 135 I mean, balls again. I mean, yeah. I'm not here. It doesn't here look like this. he's this falling off like the wide receiver two and the wide receiver seven the last two years. And, like, with this, right. we're talking about could. There is no could. He is. Yeah. Like, I'm, not, I'm not here to downplay Diggs. I just feel like if you plug – if I see Diggs in your lineup and I'm playing against you, I feel a little bit better than if I see Adams or Cup. I saw, I'm just saying, like, I just yeah, feel – that's all. That's all. I it's can't. just – I got I got a guy who's a year younger and and is tied to you know just a good a quarterback and just a good sure assistant just got and, just got extended got and, yeah all so good all give good. me give me digs up in that tier I think for 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 all of those guys I mean he's he's a guy that I think you should be maybe pursuing to go and buy because I think a lot of people are thinking just like you are Big Co and just like you know Diggs seems to be the odd man out with these guys and I'm I'd, I'd put him right up with those guys Matt what do you think I'm right there with you Casey I have Diggs in this tier as well too. For you have the same else? reasons. Okay, go ahead. The same reasons you just said. It's just he's tied to it to an elite quarterback. He he his game will age well. He's super smart and he's a year younger than the other two guys. But I feel like just what Big Co said. I feel like he's just a step down. He doesn't give you that that top end that Cup and Adams give you. But I still feel that he's close enough in that tier where he can give me ninety percent of them. So I feel like he deserves yeah. to be in that tier still. Yeah, Real quick, before we go to the rest of your tier, Matt, um, I wanted to bring back a point that Casey made where it's like, you know, depending on who your first two players you took, you might not want to take Devontae. You might want to take a younger guy. Like, that's that's really the point of tiers. And, like, we're, you know, we're going through rankings and we're putting these guys in an order for your pleasure. But, really, it's more about the tier. And it's like, is there a tier about to fall off? Do I need to try and grab the last good guy of a tier? And, and, and like, what's the build of my team, you know? And then what, what platform am I drafting on? And what order is, are they presenting it to everybody else in? And, you know, Diggs – in our ADP through the last five mocks we've done, he's wide receiver 10. You know, you don't have to take him as the – where we're putting him – where you guys are putting him here in these tiers, and that's the point, you know. Yeah. I just don't want you to fix on this on this ranking and be like, oh, they got this guy over this guy, so i got to take him. It's like it's, it's subjective, and that's why they're in tiers because you can kind of move them around in Absolutely. the tiers how you feel – like you should and mm-hmm. with your specifically case you got all the old guys older guys right there in that one tier so well and i think that back to kind of big co's point and and jay's point of saying like yeah i have those guys just below the two cd and waddle obviously you have to take cd waddle you don't um, but that just comes back to the build like if you get into that third round and, and you like i said you have those two good quarterbacks like you got uh what I say, Stafford and Herbert, then maybe you take Adams. Or, or if you have a, a little bit of a younger build, you got Brees and, and somebody else, then maybe you take Waddle uh, just because right. your team's maybe going you know, a little bit different direction uh, kind of right off the rip. Um, so let's let's get back to the rest of the tier. That's a, that's it for me. I kind of have those three guys there. Uh, Matt, it seemed like you might have had somebody else in there. I had Higgins in there as well, too. Um, I think that Higgins... Oh, nice. Um, I, th- I think... Uh, Higgins has shown that he can still be the second wide receiver in Cincy, but still produce elite levels. Um, yeah, I think that's gonna be the, that's gonna be like the new Chiefs. Like it, it could be the new Chiefs offense minus an elite tight end. Um, with Mix in there, with Burrow there, with um, obviously with Chase and and Higgins there. I I think that Higgins can still produce those wide receiver one numbers because he's getting your he, he's getting that second cornerback um i've well i feel like a lot of teams now but they probably won't have them they probably won't have guys follow chase anymore or chase or higgins because they can just let them do? sit on the side yeah you just pick your poison for the play yeah so um i like higgins's upside um i feel like 
Some people might might have them down a little bit lower. Again, this is where I'm probably the, the the problem with this this tier right here is this is where I'm probably targeting a second running back versus mm-hmm. grabbing one of these wide receivers. And I'm just like I'm probably not drafting. I'm probably not drafting these guys where they're going because that's just the way that I play. Either I'm taking a second quarterback or I'm taking my first or second running back because that's the way that I like to build my teams. Mm-hmm. So a lot of these guys, I'm probably I have them ranked here, but I'm probably not having them on a lot of my teams because unless I have them, unless I draft them in the rookie draft, because this is not how I typically I don't typically build with this wide receiver i'm i'm waiting i'm waiting a couple rounds to grab a wide receiver one unless i see that someone's falling and i'm going to trade up for them because i want to build through my quarterbacks and my running backs because i feel like that's where i'm really going to hit the home runs yeah i completely agree i went through these mocks to see who i had taken where to help with creating these rankings like i already made some of these decisions right i go and look through and most of these mocks i hadn't taken a wide receiver through like five rounds because yeah. i'm trying to get quarterbacks and running backs and maybe kyle pitts or a tight end you know an elite tight end here or there and I just, i'm i'm right there with no. you uh I, I i'm not i have i didn't take too many swings on these guys i do i think i'm the only one I think I'm the only other one with T. Higgins in in this tier with you. Um, just just had a hell of a season last year. Did miss a couple games. Got banged up a little bit, but like heated up towards those final six games of the season. Averaged 108 yards mm-hmm. a game, four touchdowns over those six games, and then he just completely murdered in the playoffs. Not so much that first wild card game. He was coming off of a, of a foot injury, and I think he only had like one target or one catch. But the next three games, he goes seven for 96, six for 103, and four for 100 and two touchdowns in the Super Bowl, which he did grab Jalen Ramsey's face mask and that probably should have been called back. But, like, he just was unstoppable. And, like, watching this dude play, he does everything. He Like, his best play is, like, just go run down the field and I'm going to throw it up. It doesn't matter if there's the best corner on your or, or safety helping or you got the second corner. It doesn't matter. Burrow's just throwing that bitch up and he's going up and high point drinking, high point drink, killing the ball in the air. But then you also see him run a fucking whip route on the goal line. Yeah. On, on on a goal to go yeah. Yeah, and just that. burning corners like he's just yeah. fucking good he reminds me of a like young Allen robinson just to yeah. kind of play a similar game there i think robinson's a little bit bigger but the game the, the game they play is very similar i like it uh big co you want to wrap put a bow on this this tier here what are your what are your thoughts i like higgins being up here for these guys i i do i in the so you, mock okay, draft well, hang on hang on one second you, you you broke it with cup and adams and then what would start start your tier uh Oh, you got Diggs tier here three. on the next tier? My tier three, my, my, my tier two and tier three were together here. Cause okay. so, so it's basically my tier my tier three is CeeDee Lamb, Jalen Waddell, and, or Cooper Cup, Devontae Adams based mm-hmm. on mindset. So I just mm-hmm. those tiers flip-flop for me, um, and and I could feel fine about if I'm Lamb or what. I like what the analogy you used and, and how you set up whether or not you might take your Waddle or your Devonte Adams based on the first pick or two that you have, if you already kind of set the tone based on how the draft might have fallen to you, that's exactly what just happened with me with T. Higgins with this draft that we're that we're just finishing up now, the mock draft. That was my first T. Higgins plug scoop of in any format. Now I've never gotten gotten him in the mock yet, and I don't have him on any of our teams unless we have him. We might have him on a, one of our teams that we have together. I know I don't have him have him on a solo team. Obviously, that's not cool. You know, T. Higgins is a beast. So, and I, and it was the same type of situation. We're in this this mock draft. I got uh, a late Jonathan Taylor, and you know, like pick one seven or one one eight, something like that, that which crazy. I was super happy about. That happens in Superflex. And then it comes back around. I have to take Trey Lance because um, I didn't want to get stuck, and I just took the upside on the Trey Lance. If Trey Lance, Trey Lance is um, my team's going to be <laughs> really good. And then on the third round coming back, I'm like, all right, well, I got a super young, I got a, I got a beast running back, so I got to take this pick serious. I can win, but I got a stud, young, potential quarterback who could break fantasy football, but also he might not be a good quarterback. I don't know. So, But he's young. So, And JT's still young. He's not right, like, right, right, right. Yeah, and I might could trade JT. You right. know, my team falls apart. I could get a haul for Jonathan Taylor right. this year. So I took T. Higgins, and I, and I just wanted to see – because I had my – picks five six seven already figured out i was gonna be a round or two ahead on some guys and just kind of knew what my middle of the draft was going to look like so i wanted to play with the first part of my draft and t higgins i mean i, I like it i like it so you got beast. you got Diggs and, and higgins here 
Um, well, again, my, my, I got Diggs and Higgins in the same tier that also involves A.J. Brown, D.K. Metcalf, Debo, and based on just draft value and, and equity alone, I bring Drake London into that conversation because if you you're you're I would I would venture to say that you probably wouldn't send if you sent the AJ Brown if you sent the Drake London owner if you sent AJ Brown to get Drake London they might turn you down right so that's just kind of like all right my 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 values are right here with these guys so it's a bigger tier for me it's pretty much merging y'all's tier three and tier four because my tier two brought the, I brought the old guys up that are studs and I mixed them with the two stud youngsters Lamb and Waddle and interchangeable again so I have a big tier three or four, whatever you want to call it. All right. So. Well, I got I to go make one more point before we move off of the regular tier three where T. Higgins I'm not and sure Stiggs and Higgins were up there for you That's your tier three. Big Co's got his own magic tier system <laughs> over there where, well, it's two and three, but it's three and four, you know. Um, Subjective. But, but I got to put DK Metcalf in this tier with Cooper Cup and T. Higgins and A.J. Brown. Uh, I just can't quit DK. And I'm like, I was talking to Casey on the phone. I was like, I've been trying to figure out ways to make my DK Metcalf argument, you know? And he's like, you don't really have to make a DK Metcalf argument. The DK, the Metcalf, the, the argument is he's DK Metcalf. Exactly. He's a freak. Uh, he's still really young, only 24 years old, 17 points a game last year overall. And then I will point out with DK, the five, the four weeks he played Gino. with Geno Smith, he, he had 19.6 points a game. Right. Mm. So it was a good little stretch. Oh, that's scored, fire right there. That's scored that 12 is. touchdowns overall. So even if it's dire and you're like, ah, I hate the situation. And, yes, they might sign him. And that might be kind of a bummer because Carroll wants to run the ball. And they might be wasting some of his good years if they give him a massive contract. And, and maybe if they don't pay him, he holds out, which he doesn't seem like he's about to do that. Um, but I could see being a little down on DK and having to bump him down a little bit. I just can't, man. I just can't quit DK. And I, I'm like, he did great with Geno, and it looks like Geno's going to be the starter there. And if they end up trading for Jimmy, that's probably better. Um, I don't know. I completely They're agree. not going to trade for Jimmy, but if they cut Jimmy and Jimmy I was picked up. Complete, like by the dip on DK. Yeah. It, yeah, I just brought my got my man set. Got just – CeeDee Lamb and Jalen Wilder are my tier two, and Cooper Cup and Adams are there as well. So that basically sits – DK Metcalf is sitting on top of my tier three. So okay. that and, – and, and so because Cup and Adams are not in my – those, you know, they have been elevated for me. So DK Metcalf is sitting on top of A.J. Brown and T. Higgins for me because he is the cyborg, right? I get sure. – I love Matt's argument for T. Higgins, and it's on the offense. Like, there's no doubt about it right this minute. Just – and then Jay Wayne comes in, hits you with 19 points a game from Geno Smith. 19.6. You know? It's almost 20. So, like, round up, you know? I, I love, you know. I think so he like had a stinker in me, there that kept him down a little bit. For me, bit. this is just. It wasn't consistent. It was a yeah. good, bad, good, yeah. bad. For, but the average, okay, it's, that suits my argument. That's all that we're doing here. I got a, stats to suit my fa- my argument. It's a big Boom. tier for me, and DK's on top of it. Because for everything Jay Wayne just he's an absolute monster. He's still super young. And just last year, he was, like, top five in every startup. Yeah. All now, right, Russell so, Wilson did lead, but he right. scored 20 points a game with Geno. DK, Jay Wayne, recap your tier three for me. So I got, Coop, I got Cooper Cup, A.G. Brown, Metcalf, and Higgins. Okay. All right, so let's jump into tier four here. Um, I'm going to start. I got Tyreek, Higgins, Debo, and DK in my tier four. Um, we'll, we can kind of double back and we'll take it where it goes. Matt, where, where are you at here with tier four? I have uh, Brown, Samuel, Metcalf, and Waddle, but... I think I'm too low on Waddle, but I have some, my my concerns are my concerns. Yeah, move so, on up. So you got AJ Brown, Debo, DK, and Waddle. Yep. All right, and uh, Jay Wayne, where are you at here? So I got Debo at the top of this tier, and then I had to squeeze Devonte in, which I'm probably too low on Devonte. I I could make tier three of five of them, but I I feel like I got Debo's three years younger than Devonte, and but. There's concerns. We'll get into Debo. Uh, and then I got Diggs and Tyreek as well in, in this tier. All right. So Debo, Devontae, Diggs, and Hill. And, and Big Co, you, you gave us a big a big tier here. I got a big right. – uh, so Jason just started on it. Debo, the only reason he's in this tier for me and not up, up above is because of the injuries. I said, you know, if you turn injuries off, Debo's a first-round pick. 
Uh, so in DK, you're buying the dip on DK, but DK's in here because he's not necessarily lined up with an offense that wants to throw it as much as they should. Um, so you got DK and Debo, AJ Brown. This is this is my big tier three. So AJ Brown is here because of the Eagles offense and the potential for rickety knees. T Higgins is here. Stephon Diggs is here. Tyreek Hill is here, and Drake One London is here based on the new shiny object that everybody's going to value super super solid yeah all right um so i'll circle back to debo real quick i think it's a, i think it's all it's a two two-fold situation um i think it's that there's caution tape wrapped around them f- because of yes injuries for sure but also we're just not sure what the usage is going to be there's still a trade target there's just seem there's still a trade thing up there of saying that yeah yeah i didn't rescind anything like What's the usage going to be like with Debo? He's good as a receiver. He's he's really good as a receiver. But the value of Debo is that he is tailor made for the system that he is in, and the fact that he can get he he's going to run it 50, 60 times a game. Now maybe they pay the shit out of him and he doesn't care. But it seems like maybe the issue that they're having is that maybe he doesn't want to do that, or maybe it's just that he needs to get paid. So it's injury and goes with that Swiss Army knife that fits so well into what he's doing. And if he's not on the Niners, I think you gotta you gotta bump him down a little bit. Agreed. Um, but not, nothing crazy. But you know, if, if if you took if you remove those two things, if you said even if you just said they're paying him and Debo said, hey, I'm fine with using me pretty much exactly how you used me last year, I, I you know I would bump probably DK or uh, Debo uh, possibly up or up around. But for me, it's just there's a, there's a twofold uh, deal with Debo that just pushes him down a little bit for me. So, so if they pay him enough guaranteed money, when I think we talked about this, uh, you guys talked about this, I don't know if it was in a YouTube video or, or, or a separate Patreon show, uh, but you know, if, if they pay him enough guaranteed money that he says, I don't care, you go ahead and feed yeah. me the ball. Because he's an amazing wide receiver, right? 120 mm-hmm. targets, 77 receptions, 1,400 yards, and six touchdowns. That's a strong wide receiving year. But the, the thing that made him the wide receiver three overall, averaging 21 points a game, was the 59 rushing attempts for 365 yards and eight more touchdowns, right? right and right. he doesn't want to take that wear and tear on his body because, like you guys have mentioned, the injury history. He missed a game 21, had a groin strain, missed nine games in 2020 with a fractured foot in the preseason and a hamstring strain. And the hamstrings, he had a slew of those in college. That was really what concerned NFL analysts and, and, and owners coming into the pros uh, what was those, all those major hamstring strains that caused him to miss, I think, a total of 21 games in college. He also well, broke, he broke his fibula. His broke his foot. He broke his fibula. Yeah, they Her didn't. Leg. Yeah, <laughs> broke th- something. Which he, that was in his junior season, and 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 I After don't think like three or four games. I didn't. He, I didn't read a lot about that from a concerning point when they were talking about where is he going to go in the first round or not. It was the hamstrings they referenced. But twenty one missed games that I counted up in college, and then another eleven through three years in the pros. Um, but but when healthy, just obviously an amazing 20, specimen. Yep. Yep. Twenty one as a, you know, Gamecock Debo Samuel. Twenty one missed games, but the games that he played, he was the best player on the field. Sure. That's Every single he, that's, week. That's how he you know? Well, that's why he was like one of the first picks in the second round. Right, right. So, uh, like Casey said, I mean, you get the eight rushing touchdowns. He, this man, first player in NFL history to lead the league in average yards per attempt based on minimum attempts as a running back and average yards per catch. Or is it, was it, it was either yak or average. I think it was average yards per catch because he didn't have a ton of catches, only 77 and 1,400 yards. That makes 20-something yards, a ton of catch of yards right per there. catch right there. So first person in league history to lead the league in yards per catch and yards per rush. Yeah. I mean, like you said, Swiss Army Knife is, is almost selling him short. I mean, it's an absolute <laughs> monster. But now they do I have a new quarterback everything. coming in, right? That's a bit of a yes. question. And is he going to be a Niner? We're not quite sure. It feels like they're not going to trade him, but they haven't paid him. So if they don't pay him, he's not going to play. But they they right. can't and trade then, him. And then you know? this, what, I don't know what they're going to do. It's a, this, it's a question mark. I, it's, I get it. And then when the young quarterback comes in, does he hit him on the money in stride like Jimmy did to let him get that league leading guy? You know? Yeah. And do they change up their philosophy a little bit from being able to? open it up a little bit more with feeling maybe a little bit more comfortable with Lance getting it down the field. Um, and, you know, it's not just over the middle uh, 10 yards or, or less kind of deals. And, and that's where Debo really thrives. Um, so, you know, just a little two-parter there. Why, why, is, why, is, why, why are we all pretty much 
uh, you know, Diggs and Cup and Adams were up there for me, uh, but Hills, Hills down here. He seems like he's been on their pedestal. Is is it's just is it the Chiefs? It's just the Chiefs. It's the shock. It's the, you could you. I think you just went from a quarterback A to quarterback B and a complete opposite. And another stud over there. Not that he didn't yeah. have Kelsey, but well, you just we haven't seen a prolific Miami Dolphins offense yet. And and when we do see it, we won't see the laser outright red hot type apparently two is more accurate though you, you won't you 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 just <laughs> left the guy who can get the ball to you the fastest the farthest down the field the most accurate that we have in the field in the game right now seen mm-hmm. a lot you of know? twitter clips where right. he had to come back and wait for the ball it could have been better if it was an accurate more deep ball <laughs> yeah exactly but you know so i it's the shock of we've never seen tyree kill without uh you know well, yeah. i mean we have with alex smith but then that's the thing like alex tyree kill was a beast and then Patrick Mahomes got unleashed, and he unleashed Tyreek Hill and, you know, took it to another level. And he's 28 years old. True. Right. Yeah. Thoughts and he's on, paid. Thoughts and on – sure, I'm, go ahead. Sorry. I'm just not comfortable with paid Tyreek Hill. Like, life <laughs> – you know, like generational wealth. Yeah. Like, he just got 70 yeah. million guaranteed Tyreek Hill. I, I'm, you know, I'm not saying that we have another Albert Hainsworth on <laughs> our hands. Because I think you just see the way out, uh, uh, Albert, the, the way Tyreek plays. He plays joyfully. He plays like he loves the game. Sure. But he's got 70 mil now guaranteed, no matter if he catches another pass the rest of his life. Yeah. That hey, scares me. Thoughts on uh, going back to Matt real quick. A.J. Brown and D.K. in this tier, everybody else was talking about by the dip. Is, is this more along the lines of, hey, I'm probably not drafting any of these guys right here still? Or, or? Yeah, it's just the short-term outlook on both of them is just not great. He's, with DK, you're going to probably have a one of the top two quarterbacks. How do they mesh? What does that look like? How does their maturation look in the NFL? Um, so I think you're. I think DK could even backslide a little bit here mm-hmm. um, going into next year because of. I mean, again, you said 19.6 to Geno Smith. I just don't know. I just. I, I, I'm assuming they're going to be playing from behind a lot because the league of the Legion of Boom is not walking through the door anytime sure. soon with the Seattle defense. Um, they play in probably one of the toughest divisions in the NFL. Um, they're going to be playing from behind a lot. They're going to have to throw the ball, regardless of what 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 Gumchu and Pete wants to do. They're going to have to throw the ball to try and stay in the game. But I'm just concerned about the overall usage with DK and same thing with AJ Brown. Love the player and what Big Co said about. I mean, we love the Philly offense for what it is, but how much of that is going to be fantasy production outside of quarterback? Outside of quarterback's legs, right? I mean, how much else is is, is that going to be Hurd's legs? I mean, we've got who knows what going on in the backfield. You've got you've got AJ Brown competing with another good player in Devonta Smith as well too, and Goddard. You have Dallas Goddard there as well too, running backs that can catch. Exactly. And a lot of success they had running the ball towards the end of the season where they were yeah. like the most rushing team in the league. For I sure. Yeah, and they're rushing the ball 40 times because they can rush Miles Sanders 15 times. They can rush Boston Scott 10 times. They can get they can mix in Kenny Gainwell. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Hurd's going to get his as well, too. Um, yeah. What does that leave them? 20 passes, 20, 25 passes a game? Right. There's not enough catches in PPR to go around for those receivers. Exactly. Um, but – Straight facts from Jay Wayne, 19 points a game. DK from Gino. Straight facts. <laughs> straight facts. But, does, but do doesn't feel here. good. Yeah. But straight facts. Yeah, it doesn't. It just doesn't. That doesn't make sense to me. By the deal, DK. Yeah. They feel deal. like facts you want to double check, but they write. Yeah. They write, <laughs> did, you, did you check? I them? did do the math myself. So I already kind of knew that. I, I, I had that holster in my back pocket. I. They played the Jags one of those games, no. and I've been going back and watching all the Jags games. Who you played? Like, he made a the play Bills in played that the game. Jags a game. The score was six to nine. Like, yeah, that's right. I right. lost, and they yeah. and the Jags won. Yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, true on an on an average though. If he scored forty against one team and two of them were twenty, it, it know, wasn't. 12, it was like it was like it, you know, it it wasn't that bad. The games that weren't top notch weren't egregious. You know, Gino was throwing him the ball. Let's just put yeah, it like that. Yeah. Gino was definitely targeting was, him. Was Lockett the in the was Lockett available for those he games? He was. Okay. I'm and, just, and, just, um, just playing devil's eye could hear. Good question. And, well, yeah. I, he and, was and, in the Jags game. I don't Everett. know. I don't know. I didn't yeah. check the other three games to see. But Noah, yeah, fan, but Noah Fan also an upgrade over Gerald Everett as well, too. Sure, sure. By the um, dip on Fan. All right. Yeah, uh, so that, sure. that was mostly we, we ran through tier four. Then let's let's hop into tier five. I got a couple. This is where things get. Uh, I got another guy who kind of hangs out on the side. I don't really know what to do with. But this is a little bit bigger tier for me. 
Um, I'm going DJ Moore, Deontay. I'm putting Drake in this tier, and I'm putting Burks in this tier. I'm putting Godwin in this tier. I'm putting Terry M in this tier. And I think at the end of this tier, I have Pittman. Um, so, uh, you know, let's go around the room and uh, hit everybody else's tiers here, and then and we'll dissect. Matt, what do you got on, on tier five here? I have Hill, Moore, Pittman, Godwin. Right. So you have Hill down in this one. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, Big Co? I got DJ Moore. Uh-huh. Deontay Johnson. Uh-huh. For me, those were the two at the top. And then I bring in Burks, Terry McLaurin, Pittman, and I got Godwin sitting up here. Injury, If I, I think if Godwin wasn't coming back to play with Tommy, there would be more question marks. But as soon as Godwin's healthy and he gets to play with Tommy, you're going to get that production right back, and everybody's going to be like, oh, I love Chris Godwin. Yeah, I mean, Chris Godwin's great. Um, we're just, you're going to miss a chunk of the year, and then maybe you're getting one year with Tommy, maybe two. Um, so it's just, it's a little scary, for, but Godwin is so damn good. I watched Rod God play with Christian Hackenberg for two years. <laughs> he can play. Yeah, I mean, he played with Jameis and was, you know, he's fine. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Jason, what are you, where are you at here with Tier 5? Real quick, one more thing on DK. Yes, Tyler Lockett was available for all those games, and it was 26.8, 11.8, 17.6, and 22.3. So not that uh, inconsistent It was 11.8 11. against. I don't have who it was against, what but it was five total touchdowns in those four games. devastating to my too, case. So. No, no, it wasn't. That's a great. <laughs> it's the kidding. lowest. It was 11.8. Like, that's that's a bad week for a guy you're not sure if he's going to be great or not. Like, that's that's awesome. And, and average 1.25 touchdowns a game with Geno. So that's, that's another straight facts. <laughs> Anyway, uh, tier five, that's where we're at. I got DJ yep. Moore and Deontay Johnson right at the top of that tier as well. I guess I can't help myself with Drake. It doesn't feel that great. I haven't taken Drake in any of these mocks. Uh, I just know the value on him with everyone as basically the first wide receiver off the board in this year's rookie draft and and probably like the one, two, or three for people. Uh, I got him in there, um, and then I got Godwin, Pittman and and scary Terry and I depending on the day you know I could flip Terry and Pittman I could move both of them up uh, I probably would probably should move Drake down to the bottom of that tier I don't know that's that's or, or just move him out of the tier I think <laughs> he's of, properly similar- rated in that tier where if you don't even like what he's doing or he isn't producing right away he's still gonna hold value people just love him people just love it's him a, I'm not, I guess very, I'm, I guess I'm not people then it's a safe asset. <laughs> He's a safe asset. There's very player. few people that don't like him. Yeah. A lot of continuity here in this in this uh, tier that we had here. Your, uh, Matt's is, is a little shorter than the rest of ours, um, but but and, a lot of a lot of similar players. And and I think to your point, Matt here. No I might, Deontay in that tier, I, Matt. I might nope. have another wide receiver when I'm in a draft here, but this is where I'm usually starting to build out my wide receiver core. Um, is that would that be kind of in the realm for you yeah i I had written down my notes here i had that um i said um pitman might be my wide receiver buy of the year i think this is a great opportunity to buy him i don't think matt ryan's dead i think they can play well together i think ryan can give you another two three years of whatever he can he's not going to throw the ball 40 yards down the field but pitman doesn't need that um i think pitman's gonna have i think this is when pitman is really gonna um, show who he is. Uh, but the, the same thing with Pittman is the concerns I have with London, but I just feel better because I've seen Pittman do it versus with with London. What are the concerns you have with those guys? The, the, the ability to separate. Wow, oh, come on. We saw with in, in Kill Harry, we thought he was, oh, he's going to come in. He's got. Well, the, he didn't separate. I wouldn't he, argue that, he didn't that separate Drake at all. can separate, though. I mean, he, I'm not. He can, but he, yeah. he can't. It's just, and I don't think that. I, we talked to, to the, the analytics guy, Bauer, and he said that Drake didn't fit the contested catch limit where they're bad if they have this many contested catches. Like, Drake wasn't in that. Threshold. That's fine. And I, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just off of Drake. You just and, don't think he can yeah. separate. And, nor Pittman. No, Pittman's different. I've seen Pittman. I've seen Pittman. I I had my concerns with Pittman for the same reasons when he was coming into the NFL, but I've seen him be able to play not that game. You've so, seen Pittman have a thousand yards in the season. Exactly in, in the NFL, in 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 not in the Pac-12, whatever that right. whatever that conference is now. But mm. I just wide receiver I'm, seventeen last year for Pittman with Wentz. Yeah, exactly. With and Wentz was whatever, whatever went. Wentz was a shadow of what he once was. Um, I just, 
with with the Drake thing, I'm just I'm just off of him. I'm just I just realized that he's gonna be a guy that I'm just gonna miss on. And right. if I'm wrong on him, I'm wrong on him. I don't I don't think he has that superstar potential. I think that his ceiling is probably a high end wide receiver too, and I'm okay missing on on that. Yeah. I just don't man, think he has that. He looked level. like a superstar through seven games last year for USC, though, man. He was the only game in town. He was the only one there. Yeah, he's about to be the only one in well, town he, again. Yeah, but with with who throwing him the ball? Yeah, I'm not I'm not that worried with about with Marcus I mean, Mariota or Desmond Ritter throwing well, him the ball. Dynasty. Neither of those guys are probably going to be throwing the ball next sure. year. So. I'm, so that, I'm fine with him this year. He's going to get pumped with targets. I don't give a shit what they look like. Really, I mean that's 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 why I like I like Drake because there's a built-in like Big Co's been saying. I think there's built-in security there, and I think he's just going to come in and just get volume right off the rip. I mean, so that that's that's and then I think that's going to help keep his uh, stature really high, whether or not I want to believe in him after seeing him getting the Pittman treatment, seeing him a year on the field or not. I'll be able to sell at least probably at what I just paid, if not more, um, from the season. I think that Drake will have whether I thought it was. You know, a Fugazi or or a real uh, season. Uh, yeah, so. I, I, for, he's got a cool name. <laughs> you know, crushing the name draft. He's he's going to crush. Na- he's got a cool name, and you know, he's he's going to. You're going to get a do over second year if you like. Casey just said you could, you'll be able to trade him for equal or higher value. Basically, no matter what happens. C D Lamb didn't have a fantastic freshman year. I mean, he, he was wide receiver you know, 15, I think. It was pretty like, good. But, like, he didn't, like, blow it up. Pretty sure. Good. 15, 15, but that's why, you yeah. Know? But it's like C.D. Lamb, he just, you have whatever that top, you know, people jump on that bandwagon, and, and, and London's got it. You know, London's yeah. got the, the following. This I feel the same. I was the same winning with Jalen Rager. Like, everyone's like, oh, Rager, Rager, Rager. I'm like, he's a guy that I'm he, – He's a guy that I felt that he just had to, the targets had to be manufactured for him, and he's a guy. I was like, look, I'm, I might be wrong on him. I even drafted him at the tail end of a of a rookie draft, of the tail end of the first round rookie draft. As I just want to get a share of him, yeah, guy that I'm okay missing on, and it. Sure, but he wasn't like a top five NFL draft pick either. No, and I no, and I, you know? I, I and I and I get that, and yeah. I, and I totally understand that. But he's still a first round draft pick. So and, and, yeah. and there were questions in Rager's game that you could come to watching the, the tape. It just was that first round draft capital that really kind of elevated and I'm not, him up. And I'm not, just I'm not comparing the players. I'm just talking about the same way. Yeah. Just just how it's these guys that I just have a feeling on. And I'm not, and I'm gonna, and I'm gonna miss on them. You're okay to be right or wrong, exactly. Just don't, and see, that's the thing, especially in a in a in a startup, you got options, yeah, in a lot of different directions. So it's not a big deal. Drake's not even on your board here. It's not a problem. You're not gonna miss him because it's a startup. Yeah. If you take him off your board in a rookie draft, that could be, you know, yeah. And he's not bump. off. He's not off my board. Right. I'm just not drafting him at the first wide receiver off the board. You're right. not probably gonna get him exactly. Anywhere. Nope. Yeah. I, and I and I'm okay with that. Yeah. And you know, we've we've done a fair amount of drafts, and and Pittman. A lot of times does slot right and, in there for Matt. And he Matt. ends up on my team exactly right. because I'm sitting there in the sixth round with not with a wide receiver. Fifth. And I'm like, oh, Michael Pittman. He gives him wide receiver one up upside at wide receiver 17, yeah. 17, yeah. 19, 20. I just feel like he has that upside there where I'm okay drafting that what, what, after I've just smashed quarterback and running back. I know, yeah. and and he just did that. He just gave you that production last year as a second year receiver with Carson Wentz. Yeah, and a team, you know, again. And it'll happen again this year. Another quarterback on the Colts, but they had just changed quarterbacks from Phillip Rivers going into last year to Carson Wentz. Now they're going into Matt, Matt Ryan, but it's a completely different situation where Wentz was like, a, "Hey, let's get you going again." And Matt Ryan is, you're a you're a beast, former almost elite quarterback in this league, not elite, but you were MVP, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you you know, I call that elite with Kyle, with Kyle Shanahan. You were an elite level. A quarterback, and so now you get with a great franchise with the Colts, and uh, I I like the Pittman buy as well. Yeah. And we know uh, no that, that 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 Maddie throughout his career has has peppered the wide receiver one in his yep. uh, lineup there, regardless of whom it he was. He finds you. He, he's yeah. not, and not bad peppers either. You know, mm-hmm. like he no. he'll the play call is the play call. He can read the defense. He'll know when to throw it to you, and it's probably going to be about eighteen yards down the field. Yeah. So we saw uh, DJ Moore get what most would consider at least a slight upgrade in quarterback and people are saying oh well the the uh the window to buy dj moore is closed and uh that you know where you're getting him now you won't be able to i I don't see it that way i think i've always kind of had him maybe elevated above where some other people had him I, i think this is probably really properly rated on dj moore and i've never been scared of taking dj um 
you know, what does Baker do for me? I mean, not not a ton. Doesn't doesn't. I don't know why anybody's really moving him super far up. Is anybody? What are your thoughts here? I feel with, with Baker, you might just be, uh, see a little bit more consistency with DJ, which mm-hmm. which could vault him up. I think he had those weeks where he was just blowing up, and then he'd have weeks where he would have two catches for 18 yards just because the quarterback yeah, I mean, couldn't give him the ball. When, when, when Darnold was healthy to start the season last year, he was getting absolutely smattered with targets, and yep. then Darnold got a little banged up. That offensive <laughs> line wasn't any good. <laughs> and then CMC goes in. out. Yeah. Yeah. The game kind of changes a little bit for DJ Moore, but I mean, even through all that, he's been uh, a pretty a pretty solid receiver, and, and I don't have any problem taking him. Seems like everybody's on board there. Um, Scary Terry hasn't had a quarterback, even though Carson isn't good. Probably the best situation he's been in, um, and I think he could be, the, uh, you know, any of these guys could be huge tier jumpers for the most part. But I, you know, I think Terry's got the game to really to really jump it up. We have he's been super unlucky with the quarterback play. Uh, everybody's pretty much on board with him. Um, Everybody's got Deontay um, in here, but uh, Matt. I could put. I could put. You could. I could put Deontay and Terry at the end here. Okay. Are you, I, I mean that. I mean that's a little. That's pulling hairs here. Yeah. Okay. I just have my concerns with Deontay and Terry are because of their, are because of Deontay's dumbness to be able to catch the ball. A rookie quarterback coming in <laughs> or sure. Mitch. Um, and, right. then ter- and then Terry's the same thing with just the quarterback play with Wentz. It's Mitchell. Whatever. <laughs> I named him Mitchell. Um, What's his, uh, yeah, with with Trubisky. I'll just call him Trubisky from now yeah. on. That way, I don't have to worry about the first name. But that, this is my concerns. But again, it's splitting hairs. They're moving them down a tier. Um, I think I don't know what Deontay's long term outlook looks like. Doesn't he may like not be in Pittsburgh. Be yeah, yeah, exactly. He might not be in Pittsburgh. Doesn't sound like they're gonna want to pay him twenty million a year, and he can probably get more than that. So yeah, he's probably shit. If fucking Christian Kirk just got seventeen million a year, he should get thirty. He's out. <laughs> That's he basically what wide receivers are about to get. The Steelers are backloaded with wide receivers. It's a bad team organization move for them to pay because they draft better than anybody else. They just got Pickens to come in. They got Claypool. Yeah. And, like, why would you pay Deontay Pat, Johnson? Don't forget about Pat. Right. <laughs> right. Like, why would you pay that much money for Ooh. that? Why, not, not, I mean, now that he doesn't deserve it, and, you know, he's really, really, really good, but the Steelers don't need to pay him that. Yeah. All right. Well, before we move on, uh, Jason or Big Co, you could take the floor on any of these guys and, and you know, thoughts uh, wrapping up the tier. Anybody got anything? Yeah, like I said, I think I could move Drake down and Pittman and, and McLaurin up. Man, like McLaurin, you look at the numbers, it's not overwhelming you. You know, wide receiver 25 last year, 12.6 points a game, which was 29th in the league, but doing it with Heineke, right? And now mm-hmm. he's definitely an upgrade there, got paid. And from everything you hear, he's a great dude off the field and, and watching his game, like he's got, he's got a bit of everything. You know, he's got – He's clearly fast. Like, he's F1 Terry McLaurin, fast as shit. And if mm-hmm. we can get Wentz, who has a, a pretty good arm, to, to, to connect on some of those long throws, that's going to help his game out. And then he's also – he's a dog, too. He, like, goes up yeah. and makes some ridiculous contested catches, contorts his body out of this world. Like, just some incredible plays from Terry McLaurin. And then I'm rooting for him. I like having him. This is a tier where I have guys. I'm ready to pull the trigger on wide receivers in this tier. When it comes into a startup, and uh, you know, take take who you like. I, it's it's a, probably my biggest tier so far, and uh, mm-hmm. yeah, me too. I, I yeah. me and Bitco both have um, Burks in this tier, and it's just basically the same logic as uh, Drake for me, uh, Bitco. Yeah, I think obviously Burks is in line for some targets right away. Um, just has a profile coming out of college. It looks like he. It, it was like they waited. The Titans had to make sure that Burks was available to trade A.J. Brown. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, it was right there. Like, it all happened. Bang, bang. A.J. Brown's a, an eagle. They got a deal done. He got $100 million. The Titans draft Burks. Like, it was – they – not to say they weren't going to do it anyway. It an if then but, s- right, series. Of- right. They were like, yo, we got this deal with you, but we got to make sure somebody's – maybe that you know, hey, we got to figure it out. Got to make sure they got their Burks and – they didn't pay a hundred million dollars for him. They got a new, you know first round draft pick, got the fifth year option, and they basically it literally is a replacement. Yeah, for you know so like Burks is somebody who could easily jump two tier two tiers for by sure. by week 
three. Yeah. You know, I mean, maybe, you know, of course, obviously, if he comes out crushing, but as a rookie, maybe it's week six, but it happened in week three to six, he starts getting, you know, um, it's just one of those things. All it takes is a couple of weeks and he's just getting to targets and he, a couple of, you know, slants to, to the house and all of a sudden Burks is a, a top eight wide receiver in dynasty. Yeah. yeah he's got and, sex appeal. And why would, sure. you know, it's and the, he does, but it's, there's just, no competition for targets. Robert Woods is my boy, but he's 30 years old coming off an of injury. Yeah. You got the, the, the most likely next player is Austin Hooper. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You got Derek Henry Austin who's, Hooper, kids. who can, for height, who, Derek Henry who can run it 30 times a game, but he ain't getting no younger. Yeah. So, it's just what about Nick Westbrook Akeen? Oh, yeah. good, go Kyle for it. Kyle, Kyle, Kyle Phillips, all, yeah. All yeah. the reason, all the reason why Drake that that uh, Burke should be screaming up your board. Sure. Yeah. I'm having a hard time because I'm. I feel like I'm letting the the recency narrative of the asthma and not performing well and tra- and, and, and it's not even training camp yet. But it just there's and, and he was struggling to make it through workouts in the pre draft process and all these negative blurbs. They're weighing down on me and and I need to do better of not letting that outweigh. If I was the, there, the, I'd make you drop the. Don't let the liberal media right. yeah. tell you. <laughs> Well, it's a perfect time to, to get a nice... Don't let the liberal media <laughs> tell you how to think and feel. Perfect yeah, time like, to get that Burks dip. Buy the Burks dip. It is a good time to get the Burks dip. You've seen this happen with other rookie wide receivers. Jamar, Jamar Chase. Chase. a great example where, you know, oh, well, things aren't looking well, you know. But, you know, don't let all that mess up you, the evaluation you had on the guy coming out of college because the tape is pretty ridiculous and it's very fun to watch and some people put poke at it and it's too many manufactured like the dude's a beast on the field and, and, and the asthma can't be new right i don't i don't have any facts on that but it doesn't seem like he had is to it asthma play or is he that. just out of shape well either Probably one that's not platter. good but yeah. yeah i i i don't have him in this tier i'm with matt i got him in the next tier um, okay. And that's just because I've seen these other guys who I know are borderline studs do it, and I feel comfortable with them. I don't feel as comfortable with Burks right now. And I don't think he has the sex appeal that London has, you know. I, I don't think there's as big of a cult following for Burks as there is London. Depends who you ask. but There yeah. was. Mm-hmm. Sure. Initially, but then – Throughout the draft process, it kind of dwindled for you. Yeah. Right off the rip, he was like wide receiver one, and then all yeah. of a sudden, he just kept falling from the pre-draft process post. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand that because I London, don't either. Because yeah. London's been hurt the whole time. It's not like he was able to do anything. It's just well, there's like, the allure of not knowing what. Yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah. Burks didn't come out and crush the combine. That's basically it. You know, that's basically what set his downfall on. And it's like you knew he wasn't gonna. Yes, he topped out at twenty-two miles an hour, or whatever. But like, man, that's. That's with pads on, it, with the adrenaline. That's not in in underwear where it means nothing. Yeah, right. And yeah. and he's better in that twenty to forty yards than he is in the zero to twenty. You know, when he gets that momentum building, he's a freight train. He's a train that can't be Local stopped motivated. once he gets rolling. A locomotive uh, coming out like a big choo choo train. So I just don't, I don't feel as comfortable with him in this tier as I do everybody else in this tier. That's why I personally don't have Burks in this yeah. tier. But I, I could be wrong about that, and I'd be fine with that, and then I'll jump on board. But I, I got him in the next tier. You know, I'm, I'm down. Yeah, and I feel yeah. like you're drafting him and and probably in the rookie drafts. I got plenty of Burks in the rookie draft yeah. for whatever reason. I got I got Burks, baby. He's so falling, let's go. He's falling to one of. He's Burks. falling consistently. To I've even taken him properly. Yeah, for sure. Because for sure. because where you where we all have him, he's getting drafted below that behind other guys in the rookie drafts. He's getting drafted behind Garrett Wilson. He's getting drafted behind. Um, so maybe Sky Moore. Maybe yeah. maybe uh, yeah. Olave. Yeah. In, you know? in our yeah. mock, so Drake London has been in our mocks for ADP. It's been Drake London was the 13th Davison. wide receiver. Then you got Trey Lombard. Burks yep. comes in at 17. And then Garrett Wilson's right behind him, 19. Jameson at 23. And Olave at 27. So Burks is still holding strong in our in our, yeah. our over there he's on getting the drafted, pleasure chesters. Yeah, he's getting drafted higher. And, yeah. So that's, that's, we also that's, gave him a rave review. So if you listen to us, you know we love him. Yeah, yeah. So all right. So we're 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 done with tier five, um, and then you guys have some guys that you know me and Big Co put in bigger lists here, um, uh, seemingly down a little bit lower. But it seems like for the most part, 
um, that that's about where we're at. And I think from here, uh, now you start getting a lot of differences. Look, look, we just ran through 20 some odd guys. Um, and really at the end of the day, like nobody's really going to be all that surprised if just about anybody we talk to is going to be in the top five, 10 of wide receiver scoring this year. We just talked about all the guys that we pretty much know can play outside of two rookies who just got high draft capital and seem like they're the real deal. So that's why they're in there basically great draft profiles, right? And to hold value. So like we know all these guys can play. We just went through and gave you some tiers and like you can go through like everybody else does and go and sort your columns on PFF and find whatever stat this guy was on top of. And, you know, he's yards per route run or red zone targets or this or that. And you can, you know, associate that with those those guys which i'm not saying is wrong but that's what pretty much anybody who's going to go through these tiers is going to go ahead and do um i've done it we've all done it i know how it's done but it's like at the end of the day like these are the top 20 guys we pretty much know they can all play so you know it kind of is what it is uh throughout here and and you know just going through this exercise is is fun kind of did it for y'all um but Let's keep it moving here um, and do this last little bit, and then we'll get out of here because I think it's going to really uh, get a little wonky here. So what's your tier six? I'll start off with Hollywood Brown. Um, okay. He could have gone to a lot of places that didn't make me excited based on his skill set and frame and scope of work so far. But then he goes to Kyler, you know, college buddies mm. and I got some straight facts for you there they got Kyler you know Kyler's could scramble around and find some Marquise Brown mm-hmm. um, so similar it, offense that they ran in college yeah there in Arizona I, th- I think I think this I mean I think Hollywood Brown is a great value in a startup mm-hmm. and I got and then mm-hmm. the rest of it for me is a St. Brown Amon Ra and uh, Elijah Moore um, with the caveat of, you know, obviously Brown's got a new spark, shiny object in town with Williams, and then he did all his work. Most, you know, he did. He had that amazing stretch of football, which you know, I I do subscribe to. You can't have that, even if you're the only show in town. You can't be that good without being really good at football. Right. And with you know, the quarterback, the tight end was hurt, the running back was hurt, but St. Brown was the only one there, and he performed. And, you know, you can't do that without being good. I think that the he might not be – there. I'll be drafting wide receivers after him that I might feel better about starting in my lineup to get the season started to see what happens with the Lions. Even st- – you know, obviously Williams isn't going to be ready to play yet because mm-hmm. of the injury. And Elijah yeah. Moore in that tier for me. Uh, who knows what's going on with the Jets. They got a new uh, wide receiver as well. And so – I don't know if those two guys are going to be in my starting lineup week one, and I feel fantastic about it, but just as assets and, and players that I know that I like to have on my team, I like all three of those guys. And, and where you can draft them, I have no problem pulling the trigger on all of them. Yeah. So, so I, I kind of got Judy, uh, Hollywood all right in there, and then I had a bigger tier here, and I kind of split it up. I've, I, I kind of moved these guys around a decent amount daily. So right now I have Judy, Hollywood and Devonta Smith and then a, and then a space Elijah Moore St. Brown and Mooney and then a space and then some of those rookies like Sky Moore Jameson Olave and then we got the old guys coming in the uh, Allen Robinson's Michael Thomas's Evans uh, Keenan. Keenan's all those guys you know those will be on another show that we talk about or, or maybe just the Patreon and maybe we'll just bring some of those guys to the show to kind of just talk about uh, this guy versus this guy. Uh, but that's kind of where I stand with, with the rest of the guys. I like Judy, Devontae, Hollywood. I like Elijah Moore kind of right in there with you. St. Brown right in there with you. And then I, I got Mooney there because I think there's going to be a ton of volume. We're talking PPR here. Uh, they are going they should just take step forwards uh, with Fields and, and with him. He saw a ton of volume last year, and I think he's just going to – the game is going to continue to increase and, and come to those guys to be a, a duo to uh, come for a, for a long time here. So um, – uh, no, uh, doesn't seem like really anybody has Judy in this tier. Um, I'll kick it to Matt here real quick. Um, I got I got Judy in this tier. Okay, I can't be mad at it. You you got Judy right? Yeah, yeah. I I got Judy. That's what I said. But I, I, yeah, Matt, I you're, Matt's you're, you're got Bateman six. What do you and got? Mike Evans up here. Yeah, I think Evans is just so consistent. Where I'm just I'm fine drafting him for the the, the two three the next year or two he's gonna have with Brady, and then hopefully just, just one year. 
I think Brady's got two more. I, it's just one. He, he retired for like 30, 40 days already. I mean, he's, he's that won. retirement was to get him to be part owner of the Dolphins. Exactly. He's, that was a sham. That well, was a sham and he just got like 100 million from a broadcast booth. So that's that. Well, yeah. it's, it doesn't matter, dude. Yeah. He doesn't, doesn't need any but, money. But Bateman, tell me why you guys don't like Bateman. Hang on. Hang on one second, Matt. So you got Deontay, Terry, Evan, Bateman, and Burks here. That's your mm, tier? Correct. Okay. But you could, throw, you could throw Deontay and McLaurin at the end of the last tier. Sure. Agreed. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. But I, I just feel like Bateman's getting slept on. I have, I have Bateman kind of right in that same split with off to the side with that, that big tier that I had that I split up and moved around. So I, I agree with you. I mean, there's you. no way Bateman doesn't see 100 targets this year. I would. I think. Yeah, sure. I mean, I, I can't disagree. <laughs> I like Bateman a good bit. I think I think you can make a case for 100 targets in it for everyone in this tier. Sure. So, I agreed, but eh. and the quality of target. I mean, so, so you got stuff. Burks down here, and then Evans. You that's you got that's like the first really older guy yeah. out, outside of the big dog top guys, and you just like him with you know no god like to start the season. Yeah, you could throw Keenan. You can maybe even throw Keenan in there as well too, just because I love the consistency. That's the way I'm going to build it. I'm going to draft. I've done it in all of our mock drafts. I've drafted two younger wide receivers or two questionable wide receivers, and then I'm pounding Keenan Allen with my third or fourth wide receiver pick because I know for the next two to three years I'm getting 80 catches. Getting a without, good start. Exactly. Right. So that was what I was going to kind of say. It seems like you know this is you're you're, you're you know pushing draft experience in with building this tier right here because you, you know you like to build with those guys Correct. right there so I, you know I, I, I like that um, and then the, the yeah and ahead. then Bateman I just I just feel like I feel like I'm I'm buying the dip a little bit here so I'm probably going to overpay maybe a round or two to hopefully being able to hope that get a that, guy who's a big tier jumper next year exactly exactly and the same thing with the guys that I have in the next tier as well too all right, um, Jason, what do you got? So I got uh, I got Devonta Smith at the top of this tier. I can't help it with him. I really like I really like yeah. the profile coming out of college, and I really like where his head is at. I love the off the field. I love the intelligence. Don't really love that he's got AJ Brown there. Don't necessarily love Jalen Hurts being his quarterback with all these weapons that he's supposed to support with the running game. I get why you could push Devontae Smith down some, but my man is still really young. Uh, had a pretty damn good rookie year in terms of what we used to consider rookie years being good. 103 right, targets, not right. 64 catches, 916 yards, five touchdowns. Um, Waddle and really, Chase really just crushed it, so year. nobody cares about Devonta Smith. Right, yeah. Waddle so, crushed it and, and Chase, Chase, and yeah. so you, you just know like he got overshadowed, but he's still so damn young um, that I, I, I love taking yeah. Devonta Smith. I got him over Jerry Judy. I don't really like taking Jerry Judy. I don't feel Jerry Judy <laughs> in my plums because I don't like where his head necessarily is at on and off the field. So, um, But I do know that the value for him could shoot way the fuck up. But you could so, say the same thing about Sutton as well, too. I mean, who's going to be Well, that? yeah, but he's 26, and people already don't like Sutton. You know what I mean? People love Judy. Judy hasn't done shit, and he's like – he. well, he had a pretty good rookie year, but like – he, people love him, and, and and he's not done well recently, and he's still pretty highly elevated. And if he starts scratching that service, and he's with Russell Wilson, he's gonna vault. Yeah. I feel like I feel like, and I, I have a, I'm super pumped about Cortland, and that's one of the reasons why I'm not taking Judy because I can wait a round or two and take Cortland and get in on that Russell Wilson sweepstakes, and I love mm -hmm. taking Cortland. Cortland is, is a big buy, I think, right now. Big Co said it like I want to get some Cortland before he steps on the field. Yeah. With Russell, yeah. great point. Um, but I just I, – back to Devontae, the talent and, and the, the player that he is. This is dynasty. He's so young. I want those type of players on my team. So I had him at the top of this tier. Judy, I slid Burks in there. And then Marquise Brown is in this tier for all of us, except you, which I'm, I'm curious about because, you know, he is going to play with Kyler. And, and in 25 games in college, they played together. They hooked up for 132 receptions, 2,400 yards, 17 touchdowns. And if you break that down per game, it's five, over five catches a game, almost 100 yards, and almost a touchdown. That's 19 points per game in PPR that they hooked up for in college. No nuke. That's his boy. Why, why no, why, why I'd no rather, love for Marquise? I'd rather have Rondale five rounds later. Rondale more? Yeah. 
I mean, I want some Rondell too. I'm still, I'm not out on Shit, Rondell, five but like might be generous. Yeah, five is eight. probably yeah generous. He's eight, going yeah. double digits. I'd rather but like, have him way later. And Marquise coming off of a really good year where he was wide receiver twenty two for the Ravens. I mean, wh- why? Uh, I mean, for a stretch a, there, he was a, a he was a top twelve wide receiver never for been a, a large guy. stretch of the season. Never been a Marquise Brown guy. Yeah, and yeah, I mean, now he goes I, listen, to an offense that's going to throw it twice as much. Yeah, I wasn't really – I wasn't t- taking Hollywood – I do this a lot. I wasn't taking Hollywood where everybody was taking Hollywood. And then he fell down a little bit, and then I grabbed the Hollywood. And now, you know, I'm not going to let – the fact that I wasn't in on Hollywood be the reason that I'm staying out on Hollywood. And I feel like where he just went to is gangbusters for what he mm-hmm. can do. And, and, and like you said, you're going from a – you're going up yeah. three speeds of offense. Sure. You know. Sure. Um, but – you know, I've, if if and you know you're gonna miss Nuke for six games, and you know if Rondell comes in, I, I just I don't I really like Rondell. I think all the stats all ahead. the stats say that all the stats say that Hollywood's the guy to own. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah, I like I like they just they didn't show me they knew how to use Rondell properly last year. And, no, for sure. Um, so that's the only thing that I'm fine with buying him where he is because I do he's ridiculous and if they could get him going he's awesome. Um, but that should be an offense that facilitates, you know, yeah, three weapons. They, they just lost Kirk and they they were talking about trying to fill you know fill a whole football filled up with wide receivers a couple years ago hardly any of them panned out crushing the draft that you know trying to fill it just trying to find them and they're just like you know what screw it let's just go trade for somebody that really we want to put in our system and it's Hollywood happy you know yeah exactly so they they go and they trade for him they you know go out and seek him and I just, early enough in the off season where it's not like oh they just traded him you know what I mean like yeah, the, the, and then now they got something to prove with that trade too yeah I, I like I like it for I like it for Hollywood and I like it for the fact that based on the wide receivers that are in front of him and like until he's he doesn't get the love like Casey was saying there was a stretch there last year that he was top 12 and really not a lot going to happen before the game start to really going to push him up anymore so like the value Mm -hmm. on the you know if you didn't have if you didn't have Hollywood Brown last year in your lineup you don't he's just one that you don't understand how good he was Sure. You know, there's t- like you said, if you've never been a Hollywood Brown guy, then you definitely didn't have him in your lineup. So nope. you don't see I don't him every him on week. A single team. And I had him on. T- I had him on one of my teams, just helping me push. And and of course, there was some problems at the end of the year. The quarterback got hurt and this and that. But now he goes to just a higher speed offense and and more more plays. Sure. More I, chances. More targets for sure. Yep. No, nobody with Garrett Wilson in here. Ooh. Doesn't seem like it. I'm scared I, of him. I, and we all kind of said Elijah Moore, with the exception of Matt. Um, I had I, I plugged Wilson in the my, I plugged in a couple guys after the fact, and I have Wilson in that second and that next tier. Okay, so so Wilson over Moore for yeah. you. Yep. I feel like he's a me, more complete player. Yeah, to me, it's just that I just I saw them use the hell out of Moore and be and be great. So I'm just gonna. Keep but then, if they did that, Wilson. why do they draft Garrett Wilson? Well, because they need somebody else. You can't, just, you know, they're they're everyone's sure, trying to get two, and they couldn't. They were trying to get. They had to draft Garrett Wilson because they couldn't get a free agent to come in the goddamn door. They, they, like, you can't say no if you get drafted to them. You know, sure. like unless you're Eli Manning, and and like you said, Casey, from week seven to thirteen, he averaged seventeen point six points a game, and he saw like a thirty point ceiling. Like he was basically unguardable there for a second with Zach Wilson and the Jets scheming him the ball, which good scheme. Well, the jury's still out for me on Zach Wilson, and it's it's tough, you know. It, and I, I really like Garrett Wilson. I could have made an argue for, argument for him being the best wide receiver coming out of this class. But yes. for sure, would I be shocked if Garrett Wilson is awesome? Absolutely not. But right now, I'm just I'm I'm giving Eli the nod here, and I'd probably bump Garrett down a, a tier or two, and and be in with those other rookies like Sky, and um, you know Jameson and Olave coming up after this last group that we kind of just went over. In in the startup, like this is where you. You know, obviously, I like Matt's logic on putting a Mike Evans or a Keenan yeah. Allen on your team, you know, five, six, six, seven rounds in because you know what kind of production you're getting. But that's in the area of like you right after you take your chances on the Garrett Wilsons and the Jamison Williams, because if they hit, they're going to vault up like Mike Williams ain't going. Mike Evans ain't going up ever again. No, you no. know, and people like. 
no, but it's, it's, it's the, the team build situation. You know, you it know. is a team build, but like you take, you can take a chance. Like in the, and it always happens in like round six and seven. Obviously, those fun rookies gets thrown up real high, but in round six and seven, that sameness starts to evolve in the like for the next yeah. five rounds of NFL players, and then you have the guy. You have to. That's when you go and you grab a couple of rookies that could blow up. And you if and if they don't, then you missed out on a couple. You don't have that, you know. If you didn't reach or whatever, you might you don't have that Cortland Sutton on your team now, uh, or you don't have you know a, a prove like a Devonta Smith. Jay Wayne said, I made great points for him. Like I want Devonta Smith on my team, but I'm just going to have to buy him mid season when the owner is not exactly happy with the Eagles offense and ability to put Devonta Smith in your in your lineup each and every week based on AJ Brown. Uh, you know, I, that's that's the way I feel about it. It's like I do want Devonta Smith too. I just I don't think I can take him where you got to take him in a drug startup because I think when you get in there, I think there's going to be a little dip coming. Yeah, you know, there's, there's he's dips. pretty affordable though, and he starts. I, no, he, I he mean, certainly is well, based yeah, on based yeah. on what happened, based on what he did last year. He's, he's very affordable. Wide receiver, twenty four, off very board, affordable, right ahead of Marquise, and very affordable. Just, right in the mix with those rookies. Some players, so like, I'm are, taking Devonte over. These rookies. That some when players are dipped now, and some players are going to dip later. And some players, you know, obviously. But you're had, right. He probably can be probably a little more affordable in you season. Know, like I can uh, see that. Jamison Williams didn't spike in anytime soon. He's hurt. But like a Garrison Garrett Wilson could come out there, or an Olave, or somebody like that could come out there and Splash. be like, "Look at me, I'm awesome." Three tier jump. Yeah. You know. Uh. You know, Mike Evans and, and Keenan Allen aren't going to do that. But Garrett Wilson could also come out there and be on your bench for eight weeks, and Keenan Allen and, and Mike Evans can help put you in the playoffs. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think me and uh, Jason did this uh, on Patreon, uh, you know, kind of went through these lists together just for them earlier, doing a little bit different discussion. Um, and, you know, and me and Jason have talked about this a couple of times. He, he's not really going to take the Drakes and the, um, and the Burks in – um, what's that? Sorry, I'm Jason J. Wayne's got a personal fan over here. I gave y'all a big one over there. Oh, that you get fans from both sides. You got uh, right side fan, left you're, side you're fan. Direct line of sight of that fan for me. <laughs> but it's hot, it's hot in this bitch. Hey, anyway, you're oscillating off of that fan. I just realized that you son of a bitch. It's never been on. <laughs> it's never been on. I asked you if you could feel it. You said yes. It's we never been want, on. If mm. we don't want the fan to turn and blow Brad down. So anyway, he spends so most of his time Casey, facing the back. You're way. saying you're, you you guys basically coming through. You're not taking Burks. I, I no, said that I, he, I'm he having said, a hard time taking Jason Burks. Said he's in having London. a hard time taking those guys. Oh yeah. With, with the with basically what I was leading to was that when we get to these kind of next tiers that I'm alluding to that we're not going to really get to today, but just going to give a synopsis of is like, you know, just like you're kind of talking there, Big Co. You got the next guys coming up are Garrett, Jameson, Olave. Uh, Sky, kind of those guys where they're maybe a little bit more friendly priced where you can put them on you and and, and they'll jump up uh, where he doesn't want to spend the money to get the Burks. But then you got the old guys coming in and it's like kind of what do you do? You're at a crossroads. You're, you're kind of half in w- with what Matt's doing. And I think it just goes back to team build, just like we were doing uh, at the very beginning of this with Adams and Cup and, and Diggs, you go back to saying, how is my team kind of filling out here? And then you you, you kind of decide whether or not you do want to put Mike Evans or Keenan Allen on your team, maybe even around early to try to, you know, go ahead and hammer home at the end of the day where we're trying to win. Um, and you can still sprinkle in some of those younger guys uh, throughout and to the point of, of, you know, Devonta Smith. I think you can sneak Devonta Smith in your lineup and, and say, hey, I paid for him, but I may not be able to quite use him just yet and, and you know, supplement that with Allen Robinson. Um, and then, you know, maybe even guys like Jarvis super late or, you know. Uh, yeah. Can I throw some game theory or strategy at you right here? Because it seems very pertinent to that conversation. Go ahead. Like, I don't think many people, like, Matt has a very defined strategy in his head about how he wants to make his team. And I don't think many people are as clearly focused as Matt is in in a startup about the way they want their team to look and about their, you know, for lack of a better term, the, 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 focus on what his way is and the fact that he's very comfortable with it and like a Mike Evans or a Keenan Allen I would almost gamble like instead I would almost do the opposite of what you just said with him Casey I'd wait the round because I think those are two those two are names that are going to sit there 
on t- it based no matter what format you're in at one point in your startup we'll be able to show that very soon because we're going to get in some startups mike evans and keenan allen are going to be at the top of the page because they're going to be older and some people are out on it like keenan's old but he's awesome Mike Evans is not that old, but he's old, and some people are out on him already because he's 30 slow, this year, I think. and he's touchdown dependent, but he's absolutely awesome. I think those two guys, their names are going to sit at the top of the page for a, a half round to a round, and people are going to be stabbing at the younger cats and taking, grabbing a running back here or there and maybe filling out a tight end or do, doing this. And definitely, if you're not super flex, people are going to be looking at their first quarterback. I feel like you wait until the Keenan Allen or the Mike Evans or e, either A, it's way past ridiculous they're not gone already and you can grab them for basically free now. Or B, somebody's going to draft them and they're going to feel like they settled because they really weren't sure what to do. And maybe you could come back in and say, hey, I see you just grabbed, drafted Keenan Allen. I, I pick in three picks. What can we do to swap around here because I want him or whatever? And versus like if, if you would have taken him a round ago, you don't see that somebody else doesn't take him for a round. Like, you, you know, what I mean, that that whole like six round drops to a seventh. There's so much value there. If you don't take that player or even just say, hey, I, I could take Keenan Allen here. Let me trade back, pick up something to see if he's still on the board. And if he's gone, you're really OK. Yeah. You can replace that as as far as a dynasty value. You can replace that. You might not be able to put those 95 catches in your lineup, but he's still 30 years old and he's going to depreciate immediately. Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, I would be waiting on those two cats to get drafted or waited so long to where it's become uncomfortable and you're like, all right, I got to take them now. And now you've already put at least one more player on your team in that – you know, value per yeah. se. Yeah. You know it's, what I mean? It's fun. We were talking about Garrett Wilson here because – According to our ADP, he's going ahead of he should he sh, he should have been in tier five according to the eight yeah. the, exactly the couple of well, drafts. Yeah, you your chances exactly. of taking these rookies way too well, soon. Well, no, in his but mind. that's that's exactly. But if you if you line up wide receivers, it's different versus you line up everybody in a startup. Like the person who takes Garrett Wilson in a startup, you're gonna have a hard time trading with him because he just went and took his rookie. Yeah, the person that takes Keenan Allen or Mike Evans in a startup, unless they take him in the fifth round, and you're like, wow, that dude did what I was kind of thinking well, about exactly, doing. That's the point you know I was gonna make. It takes one guy to, to take those two guys in the sixth and seventh round or whatever, and then Matt's gonna be that guy. Yep, probably. But more than like I just not in the needed, fifth, but it was no, already not the fifth. No, not the fifth. You know, it it already happened last year. I was in a startup last year where Keenan Allen and Mike Evans were just sitting, and that was last year. Now they're a year old. Yeah. Well, it, it depends on the room, you know, it That's, really yeah, does. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But, you know, I guess to that point, I would um, like I, I'm just going to f- figure out which one kind of hangs around the, the latest and then, you know, target that for me. A Rob's kind of the target in there because he seems to hang around longer oh, than love that. Keenan love that. and, Keenan and uh, Evans. And then even Michael Thomas, really, like we don't really know, but I mean, could be great. And Nuke's suspended for six games, so he, he hangs around. But all those guys are, are, are nice little anchors. You don't want to take them when you take them, but it's, it's, it's points in your lineup. Um, yeah, I'd, which, in, the, in this most recent mock we did, I'd literally just draft Keenan now in the seventh round over Garrett Wilson. Right, yeah. and then, and and then when Casey brings that up, a Rob, that was another le- another um, level down as far as round, and then maybe another round and a half before I took Nuke, and maybe the tenth. Like you said, Casey, it didn't feel great, but I was like, I can't not take Nuke here, yeah, because he could easily come back in six games and just. Be it's like Nuke, Michael. It's, it's like Michael. Again. It's like Michael Thomas sliding. I mean, yeah, got a little steroid. Uh, that's what. Pap- that's exactly like I would much rather have Nuke coming off a six game. I know he can't rest. play for six games, but he's but he's not playing because he was doing the opposite of being hurt. Yeah, you know he of course he <laughs> got rejuvenating. Hurt. He he got hurt, then took some good stuff to get healthy again. Got popped, missing some games. Versus Michael Thomas, who we don't, he may hit the field running and be like, oh my God, I can't. All Whoever, every team in this year's startup rounds that gets Michael Thomas into 10th, and if he's Michael Thomas, if he's 90% of Michael Thomas, then they're, they're cheating, right? Yeah, right? But if he comes back and there's like some sideways ankle action going on, you're like, oh, I could have had Nuke, or I could have had this guy, or I could have had, you know, another level down of, of rookie, yeah. you know? So it's just, it's hard for me to pull the, trigger on mike wait mike mike thomas i don't want to be the guy that drafted him if he's toast he has, i'd love I mean. to be the guy that drafted him if he's still okay yeah. all right jay wayne you you haven't added some words in here uh got any closing thoughts and then get us out of here we've been talking for a while 
Yeah, uh, man, I don't even know where to, where to start here. Um, I, Darnell Mooney doesn't get enough love, baby. Let's go. Mooney, they got a huge no target to, for me all off season. No one else to throw it to. So uh, I, I love I love that. Appreciate y'all sticking with us. Um, there's a lot of meat and potatoes, a lot of hot fantasy fire here. Quad pod went long. G- great chat though. It was a great chat. Yeah, yeah. I I, uh, I appreciate you, everyone for joining us. And if you're listening on the podcast, definitely go just tap five stars. You don't have to type anything stupid. Uh, I really like the show. You know, just tap the five stars. I don't need an explanation. <laughs> Spotify, iTunes, that would be greatly really appreciated. Really like the show, but you could have got to it a little quicker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's really I'll, annoying. Uh, I'll work on that. You are. Man, I spend a lot of time editing this bitch and putting timestamps, so don't hit me with some stupid comment about hurry up. Like, just skip to the part you want to see. Uh, anyway, appreciate y'all. If you're on YouTube and you made it this far into this video, definitely hit subscribe. Got to. Got to. Hit like. Leave me with a comment. Just, just leave a thumbs up comment, you know, for the algorithm. You know? Patreon.com to get in all these mocks we've been talking about. Get on the Discord. Uh, RevelryBrewingCo.com to get the t-shirt. Should have plugged that earlier. But if you're, I don't understand why we are, aren't just completely having to manufacture these things like crazy because they're so comfortable. And it's as much as any other fucking t-shirt you're buying. So get you a FF Dynasty T support the team and uh you know help your boys out love it appreciate y'all all All right y'all see you next time peace